Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we've got a channeling session. We are going to communicate with Prince in the afterlife. Now, Prince is a fan favorite here at Above Life Channel. He's the reason why Above Life Channel even exists in the first place, where we channel afterlife celebrities for the intention to inspire your spirit, right? So the insight that the afterlife celebrity channeling session has is all inspired to give you perspective, to encourage you to live your best life. And so Prince is one of those those um, returning afterlife guests. So if you're interested in more prints, check out the playlists here at Above Life Channel. Today, in the context of there's been a lot going on, we are going to ask him a couple of different topic areas. Now, I want to explain before we dig into the channel. There are two aspects to the way I channel prints two ways to channel him. You can channel him based upon the perspective of his life. In his view, it would be his past life. Here, as you know him as Prince Rogers Nelson. You know, the guy at Paisley Park, you know that guy? Yeah, him, the Purple Rain guy. That perspective of what he accomplished, what he left here as a legacy, the physical, tangible relationships, the life that he had, the talent he had here as a human. To him, in a spirit form, that would be his past life or most recent previous life. So we can connect to that. However, in channeling, there is another level where you can connect to spirit. And sometimes, for you who are fans who are so used to his whole biography and life here, as you know him, the whole reason why you're a big fan or fam of Prince, it can seem disconnected when you connect with that higher level because it's much more of a ascension level where it's spirit and spirit doesn't have the cares and connectivity to material life needs and to body needs like you do like I do because we're human. So it doesn't have that attachment to the human experience, can reflect on it, can share about it, but that level of spirit that you connect to in afterlife channeling can bring in a higher, more evolved level of perspective about that life, about life in general. So sometimes it can seem like there's two different voices speaking when you channel. I've noticed that myself, and I know that you have noticed that as viewers because you can really tell there's a distinction. So I'm gonna do my best just to channel him and connect to him where I'm connecting with him, which is probably going to be, I would assume, we'll start at the human level and then very quickly move up to the ascension level because if you know anything about my relationship with Prince in the afterlife or in this his most previous life, his past life here. I wasn't a mega fan or anything. So I know him after his passing. So I connect to him as a soul friend that way. So my experience with him and the way I express and share channeling with him is from that perspective most often. So I want you to be aware of that. This is a great opportunity for you to learn about channeling, about spiritual connection and how it can be different. Just because he doesn't feel the way that you expect him to feel or show up in the way that you need him to in order for you to believe that you can channel and connect with Prince in the afterlife, does not mean that he's not there, that you can't connect. It's a different level, you gotta open your mind open your mind, free your mind, so that you don't have those restrictions, those limitations on this is the only way I wanna see, I wanna see Prince. And if he's driving by on, in some other way or he doesn't look like he, I would expect him to look, I'm just gonna ignore him and not see him. I wanna open your, your perspective, broaden your view so that you can experience him for yourself, okay? All right, yeah, I talk a lot. Sometimes in my intros, so you just have to get used to that here on Above Life Channel. I also like to drink water sometimes when I'm channeling. And sometimes it annoys people. Oh well, not you, 
not you who are here in the community at Above Life Channel, right? Okay, Prince, come on in. That's been a while, he says right away. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get emotional. It's been a long time. It's been a long while. Nice to see you, my friend. Nice to see you. <laughs> hmm. Good to be seen, he says. <laughs> third eye joke, you guys. Third eye joke. Third eye is clairvoyance, and I see him. I see him. That's how I connect with him. People will ask how I see you, too. He's got an afro. That's how I see He's an embodiment of his human life. He's, he's doing his best to show up that way so I can articulate that to, to you so you can really feel that energy and begin to believe that he can be present, not just for me, for Bridget, but for you as well, of course. He says, that's always the case, isn't it? I'm gonna try also in this one. So Prince, I have been, after the tumultuous springtime we've had here on the human plane, and especially in Minnesota, there are some things that, oh, I'm gonna get, I can, I really feel this. There are some things that I've been afraid to talk to you about. Honestly, I've been afraid to channel and connect and communicate with you about because of myself. Because you are very strongly an advocate for anti-racism, for social justice. And you've lived, you've had experience. And I have not in that regard because I'm not, I'm in a minority based on the color of my skin. I'm not subject to racism because my skin is white, pure white, like, hello, white is a ghost, unfortunately. And so I was afraid to, I have been afraid to connect with you because I didn't want to put myself out here on YouTube and be criticized by being a white woman channeling Prince. And the way that I've channeled you in the past, I share how exactly how I hear you because that's how I do my work. I share how I hear people. So I do awful, awful, awful accents, especially my British ones or whatever and or southern accents are bad too. And the way that you speak to me, the way you talk to me is very casual and slang-like at times. And so for me to convey that, even though it's very natural for you and I to, ha to, to convey that and have conversation like that and to some close friends, I could easily just share that. I've been really afraid to share that way on YouTube and I wasn't sure here at Above Life Channel how that would come across. Like, I don't know how to talk to you without sharing how you're talking. And so I'm gonna try that today. I'm gonna try to do it through my own, just through my own speaking so that I don't offend, so that I don't perpetuate stereotypes, so I don't become part of a problem of racism, of, of that. And so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try that. And it's weird, it feels weird to me, you guys, really weird after four years of talking to you in the afterlife and sh conveying the way you sound to me, recognizing that that could be construed as very disrespectful. I'm trying not to do that and that's tough. Because when I'm in spirit, it doesn't, I don't know if it's going to feel authentic. I hope it does. He says, I think you worry too much, Bridget. He's like, I, I think you worry, you're worrying about too much. You're worrying about the wrong thing. He says, your energy, your thinking, your thoughts are misplaced. You are misplaced, he says. This isn't, this, this isn't about you and how you're sharing or what. This isn't about you and your message. This is about you being a voice for others and that's the point of the entire experience of all all of this he says all of this mess that's the point of all this mess and when i communicate with you i get really like ah la 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 because it feels like you're lecturing 
It feels like I can feel the energy of you, the clairsentience, you guys, empathically. I can feel the energy of you getting all up, you know? And when I share that, it doesn't sound like you. Like your demeanor, your personality is much more quiet and reserved. So when I'm channeling with you, I'm sharing the way you feel to me, the way the energy is coming through, and the message. I want to make that clear. I think it's important for people to understand that so that they can know, so that you can know who are watching, that when your channeling prints are connecting to him, it's not about him taking on personal human traits or attributes. It's about the feeling of the knowing. Do you know that you're connecting with him? Do you feel the connection? Does it feel true in your heart? Does it? Then it is. Simple as that. If it feels true, it is true for you. He says, that's, mm, he just like nodded to me. Mm -hmm. That was well put. Okay. <laughs> hmm. So there are three areas that I'd like to connect with you about. I'm curious about, I'm sure people will be curious about. By the way, I'm sitting on my hands a little bit underneath my stool because it's cold in here this morning. It's cold, isn't it beautiful though? Like look outside, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Fall in Minnesota, he says. The time, the calm before the storm. <laughs> He's like, it gets real quiet, really quick, doesn't it? It gets really quiet. It does, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Did you like the autumn in Minnesota? Beautiful, he said, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but it, it is a time of change. It reminds us that we change, we're always changing. You, you, you can't stay the same, you can't hang on. You can't hang on to the past. Hmm. True, very true. All right, so uh, the first thing I'd like to chat with you about is the social, I made th three, I made a list of three things I wanna talk to you about. Um, social justice and racism, especially in Minnesota, with the, the murder of George Floyd back in May on Memorial Day, creating this entire just whoosh of energy and, and upliftment and, and chaos and reorganization and restructuring and freedom and all these things, all these conflicted energies coming together. And it was like this pain and freedom and healing and anger and sadness and grief and all of these things all together and collectively. It was really, really a powerful and confusing time for the three months after, I would say, a good three months after, especially here and now it can, that continues. He says, it's part of the fabric, the fabric of society. It's what happens when you keep people oppressed, when you keep putting people down and putting people down and telling them to go to the back of the line and that their needs don't matter, that their lives are less valuable than anybody else's. That's what is going to happen. You're gonna have an uprising. This is in the context of what you would classify or consider as racism. And then he's also saying it's, it's everything, it's economic, it's in the economic systems and the financial institutions in the lack of opportunity for African Americans, for all types of minorities, in education, in the school systems. He's saying the school districts and the school systems, it's just, it compl it's completely different for white people. He says it's completely different for white people. Okay. I, I, I can see that, I agree with you. I don't know how that feels, again, from my perspective, but I, I can see that. He says it's not, he says it's not, you say social justice. It's not about social justice, it's about human rights. What is the right thing and what is not the right thing? That's what it's about, we gotta get, Humanity has to get to a point where it's just, it's, I want to say balanced, but that's not the word you're using. I can't, <clears throat> I 
it's human rights. He says it's human rights. He's like, it's degrading to be treated. It's not even like a second class citizen, he says. It's not even like that. It's like the luggage. You're treated like baggage. Wow, that's a powerful. Oh, that's a powerful image. It's degrading. Treated like baggage, not even a passenger. And he's showing me like fire, like in the belly, like in the body. And like over time, over generations, it's passed down this like unrest, this, this feeling of, of being disrespected and not counted and, and cast aside and held down, treated. He says, it's not even treated badly. It's just not even, and it's not about, he says, it's not, and it's not inclusion, you guys. He's not using the word inclusion. He's like, oh, I don't know if I want to say those words. He says it's about evening the score. It's almost like a, you keep this pain inside you for generations and generations and generations and it's born into each person again and again and again, the pain from the generations before. And it's combustible. He says it's combustible. And when the people in power, which the police are considered part of the structure of power, yet as individuals, they have their own choices. You know, they have their own choices. He says they have their own choices in freedom. And yet they're an extension of government. They're an extension of structures created by white men long time ago who are completely out of touch with the reality of society, of day-to-day -day life, no idea. And the people that are making the decisions and the lawmakers, no idea about what it's like living day-to-day. So what would you have done during the time if you were alive, you were in a human body as Prince, as you were Prince Rogers Nelson, what would you do? What would you have done or how would you have responded to this? Would you have done public, a public response or would you have been private about it? Because I know in the past and it's come out since your death that you have contributed and donated to numerous charities and families of people who've been murdered by police officers and you didn't you know, talk about that until after people started talking about all the stuff that you did philanthropically and stuff. What would you have done? Would it have been public or private? Tell me about it. He's saying I would have been part of the protest. <laughs> he says I would have been part of the protest. And he's showing me like on, standing on top of um, like a First Avenue and playing music, just being part of the protest. He says part of like a, and he's saying like love in. He says like a love in, part of the love, spreading the love, spreading the joy for finally coming together as a community and having our voices heard so that we can grieve and we can heal. We can start to be heard and be seen. And that's what it's about, having that voice and taking our power back, taking our power back. Taking our power back. Mm -hmm. So you, but you weren't, but you weren't politically active. That's another topic. I need to talk to you about politics. <sighs> Close your ears, you guys. Stop watching if you're not interested. <sighs> I gotta talk to you about politics. You weren't even active. You weren't active in politics. You didn't vote. You were very clear about that. You said you didn't vote. You didn't, you want to be part of the process or anything like that. <clears throat> So how can you say, have our voices be heard and have power and all that, take our power back when, how would you propose people do that? Just rioting and uh, like just really marching and, and, and constant protesting or through books and music and writings and bloggings and I mean how do you want to how would you suggest doing that through creativity through being visible or through the current structures like government 
So like it would make sense to me that then we get we get more African Americans, we get more diverse populations elected to public offices. In order to do that, the white people have to be on board. The white people like me have to be on board with that. I'm on board with that. I'm on board with that. <clears throat> so there has to be more diversity than in other areas too, in the suburbs, in in the rural areas. Like I'm in the middle of like vanilla white suburb here not even suburb i'm like kind of borderline rural and believe you me i know it because of all the political signs in our neighborhood so i had to put a bunch of signs up too you know and uh, to kind of counteract that my signs are all love signs love and all that and da, da, da. but so so how would you how like you can't just complain about stuff you have to like how would you do it how would you say we're going to make change we're going to keep this momentum going <clears throat> How, how would you do that? How would you have done that? Through music. And supporting nonprofits and community groups that are active in activism. It's at the neighborhood level. He says, you don't understand, Bridget. <clears throat> he says, I know you don't understand. And I know you want to understand, he says to me. So that's nice. He's being nice about it, you guys. You don't know what it's like when you have to rely on the neighborhood, the lady down the street to help you when your parents aren't home and you're young and you need somebody, you're scared. And so you run down the street and then the lady down the street, you know, gives you reassurance, tells you you can sleep on her couch when you get kicked out of your house. Or you got a friend three blocks over that has extra, you know, uh, food or something that you need you're hungry you're still hungry and so you go and they take care of you it's like the neighborhood he says the neighborhoods that means something that used to mean something that's where the community starts is the neighborhoods there needs to be more more um he's not saying leveraging of that but more to understand you got to understand that it's the communities it's the little tight-knit communities the neighborhoods that means something that matters that's where you make the changes neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood and then the neighborhoods start getting together and they make they kind of cross he's like they cross reference each other they cross support each other they reach out and support each other on different things that connect them maybe you know geographically maybe like a road extension coming through the neighborhood something real simple he says real benign you know um there are <laughs> You got to understand that these core groups, these neighborhood neighborhood groups where you can depend on each other, that's that's what that's how change builds. That's how it develops. Then you get leaders that come out of those neighborhood groups. And then they go into bigger areas and bigger areas and bigger areas and then they come back and they bring their their experience, their their roots into they they regenerate they regenerate that area, that, that life, that, that neighborhood, the neighborhood. That's, the, that's what the community action is about. That's what change is about. That's what affects the schools. That's what helps the kids so that they have full bellies. And he says that's what gives them opportunities and connections to the arts and ways to express themselves as creative. And that's what needs to happen with the energy, the fire. You got to channel that into, you know, whether it's like sports or, or hanging out at the rec center opportunities and in uh, playing sports and activities and things like that for some people it's church going to the neighborhood church and being part of that church group and just to get out of of their own family and into a broader he says net like a net a broader net but still small so the neighborhood feels like a family and and then the schools are part of that too he says it's, there, it's all of these things all of these places that kids have the opportunity to find themselves and that people have the opportunity to feel like they belong. They have to feel like they belong. That's how they, they find value. That's how they contribute. That's how people want to contribute. They want to be part of, of, of the, the continue, like, a, like making things better. They want to be part of of the process they want to be part of the process they've been invited into the process but then told oh by the way you're just here as the token black man that's what he said not me you're just here as a token black person 
that can't be. He says, that can't be how it is. That, do that doesn't work. That doesn't work. So investing back in the neighborhoods, showing up, being the big brother or the big sister, being a foster parent, being a, a volunteer at the school, doing things that matter, helping people when they're in crisis. Like mental health is a huge thing, you guys. Like that, right? Is that what you're talking about? Like services and things like that? He's like, these things are just natural. And yet they're completely disregarded as important. This is, this is, the, this is the point. This is that family value stuff that people spout out about, he says. It's just, it makes sense. You just neighborhood, community, that's where you gotta focus. That's where you get access, places, opportunities to experience life, he says. Experience life and, and, and safe ways to try new things. He says, no, nah, I wouldn't get involved in politics. No, no. You still wouldn't, even knowing what you know now about what's happening in the United States right now, because it's October 2020, my friends. <laughs> even though you know what's happening right now. No, it wouldn't have changed me. It wouldn't have changed me. Okay, so I have to ask you this. Would you, have, would you vote in the 2020 election if you were here now as a person? Because I know that there's some people that have come out that have said, I've never voted in an election and I'm voting now, like public people. Like there's one that I can think of, a psychic actually, that has, has said that he actually has never voted and he's gonna vote. <laughs> I'm like, wow. He says, nope, I have to, I have to. A psychic, by the way. Interesting, huh? So, would you vote? Okay, you guys, so the answer I'm getting is, I don't think so. I don't think he would. He's kind of saying to me, I think you know the answer to that. He's talking about not participating in the white man's process. He's really, really in his human reflective of the human experience from his most previous lifetime is very like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, I guess I expected all that. I was kind of hoping, I told my husband this last night, I was kind of hoping you'd say you'd vote this year <laughs> because I think that would be awesome. He says, I can't vote. He's like, I can't vote, Bridget. <laughs> like, I know, but that'd be nice to know if you were here, you would. All right, so let's talk about the virus, the health crisis that is going on in the entire world. Let's talk, this will be a long video, you guys. Hope you don't mind, it's a good one. Let's talk about the health crisis going on in the world since uh, early this year, 2020 has been interesting as far as what, what the heck, you know? He says, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. He's like, like, am I not an example of that? He's like, am I not an example of that? If you don't have your health, you have nothing. There's nothing. It doesn't matter how rich you are. He says, it doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't have your health, you have, you have, no, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. So what do you think this is about? Like from a spiritual perspective, like shift into that. Ooh, perspective. So is this like, is there a meaning to this, a deeper meaning that you can share or give us a broader understanding of, of this, this experience we're having collectively? It's important to note um, that people process things differently is kind of what he's sharing with me that everyone's experience is their own. He's acknowledging that. It's an individual kind of an uh, experience. He says there's a great deal of debt. I'm gonna, is it debt or deficit? Debt, yeah, he says, um, um, debt.
Mm. What do you mean by that? There's a great deal of debt when it comes to the health crisis. Have we taken our health for granted? Is that what you mean? We've taken our lives. He said life, life. Life has been mistreated and people have not been making the most of their lives. There has been too much follow, falling in line, follow the leader. There's been too much regulation and too much, it's like monotone, he's saying. It's too, <laughs> okay. The word boring comes in. <laughs> Life is too boring. It's been too steady, too comfortable, too boring, he says, it's too boring. It's not meant to be. It's meant to be um, he, like an, ex there has to be a level of excitement, you know, is what he's saying, like an, a level of excitement. He said, it's not even as much about appreciating. For some, it will be, it may be that, it, like he's not trying to discredit anybody's feelings about your personal lessons during this time. Your personal lessons, he's totally honoring that, okay? Totally honoring that. But it's not as much collectively for all of us together learning this as humanity. It's not as much about like having gratitude for our life and being thankful and not being so selfish. It's really not even about that, he says. It's not about being selfish. He says, no, no. It's about an overusage. Overuse. It's like um, driving a car and not taking care of it, buying a car and not getting an oil change for five years, 10 years. It's not gonna work after a while. It's gonna just fall apart. It's gonna rust out. Things are gonna break inside of it. It's not gonna work. All of it, the parts are not gonna work. Then you're gonna wonder why. And it was just because of the oil change. The simple thing, that one thing. So as society as a whole, is there like one thing that we need to focus on? It's, it is an advancement. He says it is advancement. W what do you mean by that? Because that's a spiritual term, you guys, advancement. It almost feels like promotion. Hey, everybody's getting promoted. Great, more work. Yeah, you get a little more money, but you got more work. That's what promoted means, right? That's what advanced means. It means it's harder. We gotta work harder? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, I wish this wasn't just water right now, let me say. What do you mean by that? I'm gonna write down one thing too, because I wanna get back to something you said. Interesting. Advancement. Talk, talk to me about that. Help us understand what that means from a spiritual perspective. You want to. He's like, you want to grow. That's true. What you really want is an expanded understanding of how things work. All these things collectively work together. So what you want is you want to grow, but it's not grow forward. It's about growing out. That brings you into understanding others' perspectives on things. That brings you into other neighborhoods and into other circles and into other areas. It's, it's a, a reaching out, a broadening. And that's what you want. That's what the collective, that's what all of the, that's what the whole or broader intention is. It's the expanded. That's what will advance. And through the expansion, there is a, got a bracelet here. I'm wearing my, I'm wearing my third eye bracelet. This was actually given to me by a, a purple raindrop. One of the ladies in a group that I did a few years back sent this to me. Thought it was appropriate to wear it today. It's like, that's what we want is the expansion. That's what advancement is about. And then it's about exchanging. You guys, it feels like, like he's, he's I'm feeling this like flow of, of things. Like we're sharing things. We're, we're sharing knowledge. We're sharing wisdom. The people who are doctors in this group are going to the people who are mechanics and farmers in this group, or mechanics in this group, farmers in this group, and they're all sharing their knowledge and their wisdom. And same with like every part of life, like, like I'm seeing it like cooking, everything's being shared, languages, everything's being shared, 
um, skills, everything's being shared, and there's this really generalized appreciation for recogn and recognition is an ego term. Um, there's a general valuing, honoring, understanding of everyone has something to contribute. Everyone is a contributor. Everyone is. Everyone has something to exchange for what you need. You bring something, you get back what you need. It's a give and a receive and an exchange. It's an expansion and an understanding of exchange and relationships. That's how I'm seeing it. That's how I'm sensing it based on what Prince is showing me to share with you. So you see how that feels different, you guys? Did you notice that? When we started talking about this meaning of this, this health crisis that we're in, that we're experiencing now all over the world, we are in this place. We shifted up because Prince is giving us this afterlife ascension, ascended spirit view of it. And so it's not word for word or verbatim. It's just a uh, compiling of information and it comes in like at the heart and I see it and I see the imagery and I'm explaining it to you as I'm seeing it. Do you understand how that works? So sight, metaphor, imagery in the third eye and clairsentience, which is empathic, feeling the information. That's how it happens. It's not word for word, but I'm choosing the words based upon what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what he's conveying. Do you feel that, that projection of that energy? Try it for yourself right now. Just take a second. Prince, will you do this with us? Hmm. It's like, yeah. He's coming right in front of the camera. Right here. He's like right in front of me here. Not exactly in front of me, but yeah. Can you want to come in front? Go ahead and come right in front of the camera. I'm fine with that. That's fine with me. And see, you guys practice. Practice. I don't want you at Above Life Channel because you want some psychic lady to give you information and answers and tell you what to do. I want you at Above Life Channel to get inspired in your spirit, to fill yourself with hope by knowing that you are intuitive, you are a spirit, you can connect, you can. So practice, practice. Don't be lazy now, come on now, don't be lazy. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a minute to connect. All right, I'm gonna ask Prince's energy. You might see an aura, you might sense something or feel something in front of me. I'm not doing a channeling with him like incommunicado with me. Like, I just want him to, I want you to feel him. So I want him to step in front of the camera right here. So he's just gonna put his big old, big old head in front of the camera. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so just take a moment. So you guys, just breathe into your body. If you need to close your eyes so you can feel him. And if you close your eyes for a bit and then open them, it might actually give you a sensory response. You might actually tangibly see with visual imagery. Just breathe in and exhale out, keep your eyes closed. Feel into the heart space and make that purple, that heart energy purple. Imagine just a beautiful circle right at your heart. Nice big circle. Nice big, like size of a big melon. Okay, a basketball. Yeah, a basketball. That's a Prince thing, right? Like a basketball. Breathe into that imagery of a basketball. That's purple, a purple basketball. Yes, I know he likes orange too, but we're gonna do purple because purple is connection. Divine feminine energy, crown chakra, divine mind, all the good stuff. If you've worked with me before and you work with me in private session, you know exactly what I mean when I say that. So a nod to all my clients and my friends and community. Feel that energy at the heart space as Prince steps in front of the camera. Yeah, he's saying, look at me. You don't have to open your eyes to do that. Just look at me. Look at me through your heart space. Look at me. It's like, feel me. He could just sit here for hours. He's just gonna sit in front. Feel that purple energy at the heart, that circle. Breathe it in so you feel that. Just feel that. Allow yourself. You are worthy. 
Don't, don't be giving me any crap from your mind saying you're not worthy, I can't do this, I'm not psychic. <laughs> don't do that. That's Bridget, by the way, talking. That's me talking. We don't need to hear excuses. That's what Prince would say, no excuses. Just feel. Breathe in. It's okay if you're nervous. Just breathe in. And exhale out and just feel. Feel his energy presence in your heart. See him in your mind's eye, how you would envision him. As though you were having a dream. Go ahead and do that. And if you're not familiar with Prince, just imagine a purple circle the size of a basketball and that awesome purple energy and let that purple energy, wisdom, insight, Come on in your heart space to inspire you. To inspire you. Hope. Thank you. That's a word I just got. That was the gift I just got. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sweet friend. Oh, that was so nice. Thank you. Hope. So if you were to also receive a word or a metaphor or an image or something comes to mind, like a butterfly or whatever your thing may be, that's your gift. That's your affirmation that you've connected. You might physically feel it. You might get tingles on the shoulder, warmth in the body. You might get butterflies in your stomach, just like a nervous feeling. Oh yeah, you're connecting. Uh-huh. You might be a little spiritually starstruck with Prince in the afterlife. I don't blame you because I get like that with some too. Some like fancy famous people that I'm like, oh, you know, I get like that too. But just know the subtle things, a metaphor, an image, a flicker, a flash, a song. All of these things mean connection. Okay, gently open your eyes. All right, there you go. That's our gift, our collective gift to you today with Prince in the Afterlife, helping us to make connections. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for making it easy for me to try to come back into the channeling arena after I've taken a couple of months off. It's nice to reconnect. I'm still not sure if I have my sea legs back yet though. Hmm, I'm not sure. I might be having to channel some people that I'm comfortable and familiar with, but hey, it is what it is. Any, any additional words of insight or wisdom that you'd like to leave us with? This is a long video, you guys, record setting. I wonder if anybody's actually gonna watch it till the end. If you do, will you put in the comments below? I watched the whole thing. Will you tell me that? If you tell me you watched the whole thing and you did legitimately, you can put like a purple heart emoji, a little purple heart in there emoji, or say, I watched the whole thing. Or tell me what your image was. If you got an image, a metaphor, a sensation when you made the connection with him and come back and do that part over and over again and see if how it changes over time for you, okay? Um, I want to know, and then I'll, I'll watch the comments for that. I'd like to see that too. Anything, is there anything else that you want to share? He says, there is hope, you know, there is. He's like, he's like Bridget, there's no need to be depressed. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, there's no need to be, to let things get you down, you know? Don't let things get you down. And he's showing me music. Like he literally gets out of the guitar and he starts to kind of just play with the guitar a little bit. He's like, music, that will uplift your vibration, you guys. So there's a tip for you from Prince in the Afterlife. No matter whose music you listen to, let it inspire you and uplift you. Music definitely is vibration. It is energy. It helps to clear. It helps to connect. It helps to uplift our vibration, give us positive vibes. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yesterday we were chatting a little bit, so that's how I'm like, okay, I got to connect with Prince today. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Make sure before you leave that you subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss a weekly channeling session here. I hope that we've inspired your spirit and filled you with hope, encouragement, so that you live your life. It's your life after all. It's yours. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.